Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Today is a beautiful day around here, nice and cool and cloudy, and it rained a little bit this morning. In fact, it was even a little bit of thunder. Lovely beginning to a Sunday in fall, and it feels like it. As we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, made by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, good times. It really is a lovely Sunday, and I'm looking forward to it. So this, as I said before, is the first Sunday of the confirmation student masses at the end of the day, which is a lot, but it's also a lot of fun. So it's just enjoyable. All right, let's do it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifests your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel. Is it my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not, and your kindness remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory, rather, Humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Having you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, 
God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Speaking very, very simply, we have this really marvelous lesson today of how important it is to do and not just to hear or just to speak, but to do. And that counts for a lot. Obviously, we don't have to say a lot about this. We know that actions speak louder than words and the testimony of things that are done are more important and more valuable than that which is merely said. The idea that it's being presented to us today, I think is a good point also for saying a couple other things. First of all, the doing matters. That's a wonderful reminder that frankly, all of those things that are you know part of our faith, part of the doing of our faith matter. We might not preach about them all the time. We might not talk about them all the time. And frankly, we don't need to, but they still matter. Things like going to mass on Sunday matters it's still a thing things like the morality of a christian whether that be in terms of something whether like abortion or something as simple as being kind and merciful all of these things still matter and they have always mattered fine but i would have to say honestly in terms of the doing and not just the listening or the speaking the doing is usually thwarted by the things which are right in front of us in our daily life. Uh, we may be a Christian and may speak it so, but do we behave it on the roads? You know, the, the, the question about those kinds of things may seem to be a way to deflect away from harder issues, like, for example, contraception. You know, we have all these things which are just hard to talk about, right? Well, not so. Honestly, the simpler things are much more valuable because they're in our path every day. Or like the frustration that comes from being in a situation where we can't act the way we want to. That's something very clear to us every day. Much more so than the more hot button issues, as it were, or the more kind of persistent difficulties. Like for example, attending to mass all of them are true all of them matter fine and that's okay but the our doing of it is usually not so much in the big things but in the small and the being forgiving being loving being charitable is a much more thick i think witness to the Christian life than the other bigger things. The other bigger things, maybe we only can ever acknowledge them by speaking it. 
how often can we be charitable to each other? A lot. There's a lot in there. Like I say, it's thicker. Much more of our life is dedicated to that. So if we are supposed to be doers and not just sayers, this is the thing to do. Now, I have a lot of fun thinking that tonight's going to be uh, you know, enjoyable with the confirmation students that this is a worthwhile gospel, for example, to share with them in a very special way, because after all, the doing of it is exactly why we want to, in their confirmation courses, bring them to this encounter with the Lord. But there's also something there to reflect on, which is honestly that kind of fault of doing versus saying is precisely one of those things which, in my opinion, likely is the least attractive to people when it comes to the faith. How many times, if we think about how people's faith might grow or not, is that not because of a lack of integrity in the living out of the vocation? So it's very present to me just how damaging it would be, for example, if I did something dumb, you know, it, it'd be very bad for people, it'd be very bad for their faith. And not just because they would feel bad, but honestly, because the witness matters. Again, we are doers, and not just sayers. Well, the same thing happens at home. How many times at home do, let's say, we have these conversations that end up being, can you believe that so-and-so did such and such or otherwise gossipy things? That's not really a doing of the word. That really doesn't manifest well, doesn't witness well what it means to be a Christian. And certainly if we're thinking about the doing of it, not just the speaking of it, it matters. And that witness matters. And so there's something to be said here, not just about discouragement, but encouragement. How do we encourage people? to be doers and not just sayers or listeners or whatever. The encouragement happens again in very small ways. It doesn't take a lot. Honestly, it's much more contextual that we can encourage each other simply through those acts of kindness that I'm talking about in that first point. It matters and it helps and it actually does allow people to grow in their faith. There's a kind of confidence that has to build up in order to be doers, obviously. It can't just happen automatically. And another big part of this really has to be that kind of witness. It has to be humble. So when we hear, for example, this marvelous hymn in Philippians, that Christ became obedient, that in his humility, that he did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Christ gives us this really marvelous example of actually knowing ourselves well and having that confidence that comes from knowledge well and being able to be in this way rather attractive in the faith, not by taking on airs, but simply by being honest. Honesty matters. Integrity matters. These are things which are wonderful expressions of truth. And when it comes to the doing and not just speaking, the doing is ultimately founded in this thing called truth. Now, we know all these things. None of this is new, but I do think that these three points have a very special and powerful place to be in when it comes to our Christian life. Specifically that, yes, the doing of the faith matters. We should do it. But not just in the kind of the remarkable and extraordinary things that are very hard, but also the really, really small and very important things that make up our daily lives. Real charity. Real goodness. Then also how important it is to encourage each other in this practice of the faith, but not just in the big things but in the small things. In much the same way as the doing of the small things matters, so does the encouragement of the small things matter because it actually allows people to be empowered to live this life better, to actually do that which is in front of us. 
And finally, to do so in a humble manner, to remember this humility very presently, not for the sake of simply, I don't know, feeling bad about ourselves, but in a real way, taking on exactly what St. Paul is telling the Philippians. The second part of that reading is very, very famous, Christ and his obedience. But the first part of it is also really good. It's a very direct instruction. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any is awesome love, any participation in the spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, united in heart, thinking one thing, do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory, rather humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out for his own, in, not for his own interests, but also for those of others. The doing of the word is a very important thing, but it also requires this reminder from time to time. We, we know what it is, sure, the, obviously we have to do all those Catholic things, fine, but we have to be reminded of them too. And what is there to be reminded more importantly, more primarily, more forcefully than think of others also. In fact, even as the apostle says before yourself, not just for our own interests, but for those of others. Well, that's a very tricky thing too, isn't it? It's so easy, of course, to fall into that self-centeredness. Now, none of these things are particularly fascinating. None of these things are particularly earth-shattering. We know all of this, but the reminder matters. And so when it comes to actually doing what is ahead of us, yes, let us. This is meant to be an encouragement. This is meant to be a moment to reflect on what it is that we must do. This beautiful fall day is happening all around us and it is really nice. The clouds are on the top of the mountains and the colors and I can see it all. It's really quite something. Today is a good day to be kind, to encourage others in goodness and to do so just as ourselves. That's what real humility is. Just be yourself, honestly. And in so doing, we can do so much. After all, as doers of the will of God, and not just as people who will simply repeat it. There's one idea, and that's the thing that I'm kind of going on this weekend. Of course, there are others too. And I am looking forward to giving this kind of encouragement, this word of encouragement to the confirmation students tonight. It's kind of a short one, but a goodie. There's a bunch of other things too, and I, I would love to kind of delve into them, but even though I don't have the next mass, it still is a Sunday and it's kind of, you know, time is short. Ah, well, I guess we have to be doers and not just speakers. That's what it comes down to. All right, as we always do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father's prayer intention this month, that the, the church may adopt listening and dialogue as a lifestyle of every level and allow herself to be guided by the Holy Spirit towards the peripheries of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, in this phase of the synodal journey, that the presence of the gospel, alive and at work in her, may make her a place where all men and women who seek meaning in their life, find belonging and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we may grow in love for the Holy Rosary and in devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who think their sins are unforgivable, that they may turn to God with trust in his loving mercy and be reconciled. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, 
bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great, good times. Well, Sunday, we got to run. All right, God bless you all and see you again tomorrow. All right, bye-bye.